drama. The Packers' three-day minicamp has come and gone, and Aaron Rodgers was a no-show, potentially forfeiting $90,000 for his absence. The standoff continues, and there doesn't appear to be any reconciliation in sight. On that note, we bring in Monday Night Football's Lewis Riddick. Hi, Lou. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I will get to you in a moment, but I'm going to start with you, Max Kellerman. Max, is this the best thing for Aaron Rodgers to miss camp? Not only is this the best thing for Aaron Rodgers, this is easily the best thing for everybody involved. Everybody involved. I'll get to Aaron Rodgers last. First of all, the Packers, they get to evaluate Jordan Love, find out what they have. And by the way, if they like what they see, then they can trade Rodgers and get three first-round picks and stuff and have a quarterback and be ready to build a dynasty. If you think Jordan Love's ready to play now and you think he could be a really good quarterback and he was worth the first-round pick and he made real strides through camp and you can compete with him this year and then you add three firsts and more stuff to that team, you do that right. And Gutenkunst has shown himself capable in that regard, actually. You got a dynasty. It's great for the Packers. How about for Jordan Love? He gets a look right now that he would not, he, get, he gets reps with the first team right now he would not otherwise get. This is only going to help his development. And from Aaron Rodgers' point of view, think about it. If they like Jordan Love, they're gonna trade Aaron Rodgers. Because what are you gonna make, you're gonna die on, the, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna make, stand on principle, you're gonna die on that hill? I'm saying, I got to show Aaron Rodgers who's boss. If you like your quarterback, you're not going to take all those draft picks and everything you can get for Rodgers. You'll trade him. He'll wind up playing for the Broncos or whoever he wants to play with, play for. That's one. Two, if they don't like Jordan Love, now they have to come hat in hand to Aaron Rodgers, which probably includes a, a public mea culpa. I'm sorry you will have input and trading Jordan Love. I don't see what – is there a downside? Sure. Rodgers, you know, isn't as ready to play and the season begins. If he does start with the Packers, maybe they lose to the Saints week one or something like that where otherwise they'd win. That's a double-digit win team with Rodgers. They're going to the playoffs anyway with Rodgers. I, I, it's not that there's no downside. It's that it's the best-case scenario for everyone. I don't think it's the best thing for Green Bay. And I caught some of what you said. Uh, I didn't hear everything, and I'm going to tell you why. It's no disrespect to you. Um, Ryan Clark, Marcus Spears, Lewis Riddick, Adam Schefter, Dan Graciano, the list goes on and on. I don't hear a damn thing anybody saying about Aaron Rodgers with football, Max, because to me, I don't understand why everybody keeps bringing up football when it comes to Aaron Rodgers. This situation is not about football. It's not about him looking at the Green Bay Packers and saying, I want to be in a better situation. It's not about him saying, the, and, and the, rhetorically speaking, we have to ask ourselves these questions. Is he trying to say, I can't win with Green Bay? No. Is he trying to say we don't have enough talent in Green Bay? No. Is he trying to say we have bad coaching in Green Bay? No. Is he trying to say that I hate the city, I hate the fans, I can't stand being here? No. He's not saying any of those things. So what is this about? It's about a guy that feels completely and utterly disrespected, and as a result, has clearly made the decision, I want to bring attention to how this organization treats people. That's what this is about. When are we going to stop playing games? Because every time we bring up football and we bring up the Devontae Adams or anybody else that they have on their squad or Matt LaFleur or anybody else, we ignore what the issue is. That sits up there. Because if you're able to look at Gutekinds, you're able to go like this. Not a bad job. 13-3 the last two seasons in an NFC championship game. I mean, he's going to be respected. Mark Murphy comes out. Gutekinds ain't going anywhere. He's our guy, et cetera, et cetera. You know, that allows them to focus on, oh, look at what our organization is doing, as opposed to paying attention to what the superstar quarterback and future Hall of Famer, who, is, who at the moment stands is the reigning league MVP. We're ignoring what he said. He is talking about the organization. And nobody says, and I said this the other day, Lewis, and I'm going to say it again and hand it off to you. I said this the other day on national television. When is somebody going to look at Gutekinds? When is somebody going to look at Mark Murphy and say, what did you do to him? What did you do? Why? For t since 2005, he's been at Lambeau Field for frozen tundra, freezing, not complaining at all, at all. He signed one contract after another. He represents the fan base. They won a Super Bowl. Okay, he's a multi-time league MVP. What did you do to that man? Why would he, fresh off of two trips, 
back-to-back trips to an NFC championship game. Why would that man sit up there and say, I don't want no parts of y'all? You did something to him, and nobody there has asked him that. What did you do to him? That is what this is about. That's the story. I know one person you listen to about Aaron Rodgers. Go ahead, Lewis. <clears throat> now, look, Stephen, look, listen, I, I agree. Okay, I, I agree with your point here about this being bigger than football. And, and I think for the Green Bay Packers, and I said this yesterday, I said, look, there, there obviously was a, there's an accumulation of things that have happened to Aaron, and maybe not just to Aaron, but to other people in this organization, whether it be players. I, don't, I can't say, I can't go any further than that. But whether, I think specifically, though, with players, maybe that were stalwart players, that were pillar players in terms of how they were treated and how they were looked at within the organization and how you know their time came to an end there and how that was handled that obviously is not sitting well with him and how his time as he said a year ago that he didn't think he could control how his time there in, in Green Bay was going to end how that is being handled those are the kind of things when you're talking about when you're asking the question what have you done to this man I think those are the kind of things that we're talking about here and I have said look I get it from his side of it because I've seen it from a player perspective and from a front office perspective. Guys like Aaron Rodgers have earned the right to have different levels of communication and conversation with front office and management than other people would. That's just a fact. Brian Gutekinds knows this. I know Mark Murphy knows this. He's been in the league a long time. They know better than that. They know better than to think that we, the Packers, the emblem, the colors, are bigger than the players. Because the players made the Packers who they are. And Aaron Rodgers in particular has brought a level of attention to this franchise on par with anyone that they've ever had at that franchise. So for them to not recognize that and or change the way that they're doing business is a big mistake. Because you see, and it's, it's a mistake that now has resulted in this. A guy saying, as you just alluded to, Stephen A., I don't want to play for you. I don't want to play for you. It's not about money. It's not about anything. I just don't want to play for you. You know why? Because I don't like you. I don't like how you do things. Now, for Green Bay, it does make sense for him to sit out. It does. If I was Green Bay, I would like the fact that he's not coming to training camp for, from this regard. If you're a really reasonable person and have some common sense, I would take him for his word and say, look, he ain't coming back. We better find out where we are with Jordan Love. We better find out what our football team's going to look like. And you know what? I don't care what they do during training camp and preseason. They're still not going to know. They're still not going to know. Hey, Max, let me chime in here because I want to throw this. Uh, 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 I want to make sure before you chime in, I want to throw this about you because I want you to comment about this as well. <laughs> We've obviously lived through some really turbulent times over the last year and a half. We all know why, right? And it wasn't just COVID that I'm talking about, obviously. But I'm not going to bring all of that up. I'm only bringing that up to say, Max, when we hearken back to those times, you religiously, and Lewis, you've heard Max do this as well. You've brought up Colin Kaepernick. What we've also done is we've used it to highlight the level of control that NFL franchises exercise. Now, when you handle it as Lewis would, you know, and we all believe that Lewis should be an executive in the NFL. I, 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 I ain't shy about saying that. But the level of professionalism and decorum that you exercise is ultra important even more to the football players because they already feel like they have to succumb to the establishment. You have individuals <gasps> in positions of power in the National Football League who know they're buffered by the rules that govern the league. And so as a result, they're able to look at an Aaron Rodgers. And instead of listening to him and saying, hey, man, we get where you're coming from. This is what we're thinking about doing. Here's why, you know, we want to hear what you have to say, but this is what we're thinking. They're the type of people that have said to him, you go play football. We handle this. You stay in your place. That's how he's been treated. It's not just about other players. That's how they've treated him. And so to me, when we bring up football stuff, that should be a further indictment against the Green Bay Packers as an organization. Because why would somebody want to leave a team that's been the back-to-back -back NFC Championship games. Why would they want to leave? Yeah. What have you done to them? Even A, I, to I totally agree with that. And in fact, that's why I'm saying what the Packers need to get through their heads if they want to keep Rodgers is they're not the ones deciding. Rodgers is the one deciding. If he stays, it's because they have changed his mind. 
That's why I'm saying here, if they decide Jordan Love ain't it, then they need to trade Jordan Love. They need to come hat in hand publicly to Aaron Rodgers, humble themselves, and appeal to his sensibilities. Hey, we were wrong. You were right. We would like you to stay, hoping they can change his mind. But they won't be able to force him to do anything. They know they won't be able to force him to do anything. That I, so I, to, I hear you, and I agree. And, Lewis, I believe that Rodgers here will be the deciding one. The NFL has changed the rules around the quarterback and the offense to the point where if you are super great, if you're a great quarterback, mm-hmm. you are now like an NBA star Possibly in terms of the power you wield. Tom Brady... Aaron Rodgers, yeah. Patrick Mahomes. We'll see if the okay, Packers know it or it's not. It's possible they but might not know they that. They may not know it's it, and then they're behind the Lewis, times. You could go, but it's possible they might not know that because they might treat him like they treat typical players. Oh, they'll come back for the money. He ain't sitting out the season. They might have that But you brought it up. He could go go host Jeopardy. Yes, he could. They're going to pass on three yeah, first-round yeah, picks that their, that and more ratings. stuff. That was their best ratings. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this. Let me let me speak to it from Green Bay side and then circle back to something you said, Max, about, about who's going to actually decide this thing. Look. Green Bay, if I'm looking at it from their side, all right, let, let me just put myself in their shoes from a management perspective. And what would I do if I were them at this point? If I had already pushed it to this point anyway, I wouldn't do anything. Okay, I, I think I would have already made my best pitch in order to try and quote-unquote change his mind. Right now, all of my energy would be focused on what we have there, and that's Jordan Love and fi- trying to figure out, was he worth trading up for in the draft? Is he someone who will try and get some answers here through the rest of the summer and through training camp preseason and the re- regular season? But we're not going to have all the answers. This is what we've got to ride with. Okay, we already know where Aaron stands with this. And then let me, so, so let me get back to this point here about Aaron Rodgers. They're not going to change his mind. Aaron will play in Green Bay if he wants to. If he doesn't, then he may just be forced to retire. Because I don't think Green Bay, Green Bay's not going to acquiesce to him. I don't think, and at least not before the regular season starts. They're going to sit and wait. They're going to play this high-stakes game of chicken with him and see if he's willing to let fines accrue through, through training camp, see if the regular season starts. Are you willing to forego salary? Are you willing to have fines well, accrue then? Is this, are you really willing to take this to a Carson Palmer level? If I'm Green Bay, that's what I'm waiting to well, see. And if I'm Aaron Rodgers... If I'm Aaron Rodgers, if I've already taken it this far, I have to be willing to go as far as it needs to go in order to get out of there. Lewis Riddick, I think you could tell by the jacket here. I mean, I I can go a little Hollywood and stuff like that. And so as a result of that, Lewis, I mean, just so you know, Molly, I got got a a few connections and I got on a little authority that that Aaron Rodgers Uh could host Jeopardy and make a minimum of $10 million per. Damn. Per. Okay. 10 million per host of okay. the game show. But that's host always the there, there is, Stephen A. There's just a window for football. No, I understand that. But that's what I'm saying. In other words, if you want to sit out for the year. Mm-hmm. But the re- my whole, saying, you want my to sit out for the year. He ain't, he ain't going to starve Take is what it I'm trying to, to say. its logical conclusion. No, no, no. Lewis, like, this is what I mean. Take it. There's no way, unless the Packers right. really want to prove a point to their players, that they're going to give up once Rodgers shows he means business. Three firsts and more stuff than that. Three, four first round picks. They're just going to say, "Now nah, we won't I'm take not, it, I'm not and saying- we won't take Rodgers." <clears throat> no, I'm sure there may, there may come a point, Max, where they wind up saying, "Hey, you know what? Listen, instead of being fearful of if we trade him to a certain place and he winds up winning, the backlash we will face, it would be better for us to go ahead and recoup as much as we possibly can for some team that's basically willing to give us everything they got." and send him down the road because we can't fix this. I'm sure there's going to come a point where Brian Gutekinds and Mark Murphy have to make that decision. And that will probably be the decision that they do make. I'm just saying I wouldn't hold my breath in that coming anytime mm. soon. Uh-uh. They should go ahead and, play, you don't and be care patient when with you this. Play Jeopardy. What, Stephen? Mommy, I, w- I wouldn't mind hosting a show for ten million a year. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I hosting thought you're already doing yeah, that. Yeah, kind of already do I that. I thought you already do that. that. Hey, wait, what's, no one feels sorry for you. Yeah. Ooh, I love yeah. the sport yeah. coat. We gotta go. How, <laughs> how many jobs do you need? Not yeah, but you know what, Molly? You take those shows. You take those shows in a couple weeks, and you're done. Couple weeks, are good. That's true. That's the difference. I wouldn't even have to give up first take, and he wouldn't have to lose the base to me every. 